insanity. I was playing Assassin's Creed Origins, as one does, and as I was weaving through the story, watching the cutscenes and playing as Bayek in the open world, there was one word that I couldn't get out of my head that I have never really associated with any assassin, especially any protagonist that we tend to idolize and treat as a hero, and that's the word insanity. While I was playing, I started to think about how mentally disturbed you have to be if you actually were to be an assassin. And I don't mean, oh, you have to be desensitized to violence, that's something that we've seen a bunch of characters be in a bunch of different media through books, movies, and TV shows, and especially games. And it's something that we as audiences have also done. We've become incredibly desensitized to violence and have normalized seeing it and partaking in it in a virtual form. So I don't mean that it's incredible how psychologically disturbing you have to be to be an assassin just because you're killing people. What I'm talking about is having some sort of deep psychological disturbance as a prerequisite for being a member of the Assassins. You have to have something deeply, deeply wrong with you to even join and partake in the philosophy and actions of the Creed. Living a life that revolves around murder is only a life that can be lived by those whose perception of reality and people is rather animalistic and it's deeply woven by trauma. Now, these are not notions that are explored sufficiently, in my opinion, in the rest of Assassin's Creed games, which is why I want to focus on AC Origins, because all the other Assassin's Creed games kind of delve into this, but for the most part gloss over the psychological effects or requirements that you need to be an assassin. Especially in the Ezio trilogy, it's very much a Hollywood trilogy with blockbuster sequences where the mass murder that your protagonist commits is kind of glossed over and not really thought about. Which is why I want to focus on AC Origins and I want to mainly make this video about AC Origins to make a larger point about how you have to kind of be psychologically disturbed or unstable to be an assassin. I really do think that AC Origins, for me, deals with this idea best. We often see Bayek and Aya have very off-putting and strange strange relationships with their targets and their tasks. Every time that they assassinate someone, they're often shown to have some sort of spiritual and sometimes even sexual trip when they kill someone, and often, quote, take pleasure in it or wish they could have been there. When they tell each other about their targets and describe it, it's almost like some sort of fantasy that they're telling that they gain deep pleasure in. It's clear that the death of their son left some sort of deep psychological damage that has made them pretty mentally unstable, and this extremist way of dealing with it has led to the foundation of the assassins, and that's something really strange to think about. If you think about how psychologically disturbed both Aya and Bayek are and how they're the founders of the Assassin Brotherhood and that their way of viewing the world, that their relationship with violence, their relationship with the revenge has been the bedrock of what then became the Assassin's Creed. It's kind of unsettling if you think about it in that way. Now, at this point, it's worth taking a pause to breathe and reflect on what I'm saying while I explain something that's very crucial to the next point that I'm going to make, and that is the idea of memory corridors. For those who are uninitiated in Assassin's Creed lore, memory corridors are the sequences after you kill a target where you find yourself in a white room or some sort of virtual room and it's only you, the assassin, and the target who are in this room. Usually, this is where a very interesting philosophical conversation happens between the assassin and the person who's just been assassinated. Some aspect of the plot or some philosophical point is discussed that moves the story forward, either at a character development level for the assassin or at a wide plot level for the overarching story. For most Assassin's Creed fans and what you'll find on the internet as to what explains the memory corridor is the following. In Assassin's Creed, memory corridors are virtual spaces that allow the animus to recreate images from a subject's genetic memory. The user sees the memory corridor as an empty virtual space within the animus. When the memory loads, the virtual environment is recreated over the memory corridor. So essentially, this just means that the generally accepted explanation for what the memory corridor is, is just the animus using all its computing power to recreate that conversation after the kill as efficiently and accurately as possible, disregarding the rest of the environment, which is why you see yourself in an animus loading screen. Now, if you really d delve into the games, you realize that this isn't a very accurate or reliable explanation, and a lot of fans in the deeper community tend to explain it by saying that these assassins have an extreme amount of ISU DNA which allow them to see through the memories or thoughts of a target, or at least have some experience with the target's mind after they have killed him. This is mainly because in the memory corridors, even though they're pretty accurate and pretty tame, sometimes you see the target walking around even though he's just been stabbed in the neck, and sometimes you see some more cinematic things. But for the most part, the point is the same, which is that these are things that the assassin probably experiences in their memory to some degree. Maybe the way that it's represented in the game is not that accurate, but for the most part, what you see in the memory corridor is what the assassin saw in real life, what happened in real life. Now we go to AC Origins, and this is where things get really interesting and frankly, really disturbing. Think about Bayek. Every time he kills a character, he has a very religious, spiritual, kind of mythological memory corridor where way more things are happening, way more disturbing things are happening, and it's clear that this has absolutely nothing to do with reality. Bayek kind of enters some so 
sort of trance where he's taken out of the real moment, taken into this hallucination, this vision, this weird purgatory in his mind where he has interactions that are truly disturbing with his characters and he loses complete control. Probably the best and most disturbing example of this is when Bayek kills someone like Medunamun. For those who don't know or remember, Medunamun was the first target that you're tasked to kill in Assassin's Creed Origins. To me, Bayek basically always enters into this spiritual trance whenever he kills someone and that's when he's most dangerous because he cannot distinguish between reality and hallucinations and it leads him to do some really horrific stuff. When Bayek kills Medunamun, the entire conversation is basically in his head. Nothing that you see happen in the memory corridor is real because Medunamun is already dead. He's talking with a corpse and he's hallucinating a conversation in this astral plane where he does kind of fucked up shit. Medunamun is actually already dead. And what's more likely is that the entire conversation Bayek is having with Medunamun is just a hallucination that's triggered by the psychological overstimulation of taking the life of someone who was responsible for killing his son. This is why it's even more disturbing when Bayek beats Medunamun with the Apple of Eden until his face is completely destroyed. I mean, think about it. Medunamun is already dead. Bayek is hallucinating a conversation with a corpse and it leads him to grab the Apple of Eden and actually bash his head in in real life. It's pretty messed up. And of course, all of these memory corridors and moments are open for interpretation because we don't have one definitive answer for what they are and what they mean. But I think it serves to highlight the point that I'm trying to make about assassins, their psychological unsustainability, and how overall, it's definitely something that hasn't been explored enough and that I'm really grateful that AC Origins explored. Bayek and I are, are wonderful characters, very likable, very charismatic, and I would have loved a trilogy with them. But one thing that they don't get enough praise for doing, or at least the writers of them, is displaying how an actual assassin would probably have a relationship with murder if they were committing assassinations at the degree that they do. Even if you take away the fact that most of the gameplay is just non-canon and probably assassins didn't kill as much as you do in your game because you're fucked up, assassins in cutscenes and in the actual stories if you read the novelized versions still commit crazy amounts of murder and kill a lot of people. And the only way you can kind of carry on with that and try and do good is if you have a very very weird and overly intense relationship with life and death. The whole of AC Origins shows the extreme version of what I mean in this title and in this video and I really like it because it gives more of a realistic version of what men and women dedicated to murder would actually speak and act like. I don't believe that Ezio is the most accurate and realistic representation of what happens when someone becomes an assassin. I think Altair or Bayek are because they either incredibly monastic and suppress their psychology or incredibly emotional and let their psychology surface to the top and influence their actions to the point where they're beating a dead corpse. The life they lead takes a toll and more than likely they're often driven to choose this form of life because of some sort of trauma that happened prior to joining the Brotherhood. And that's something that I think is really interesting how assassins in the Assassin's Creed tend to recruit people who have gone through serious shit and it makes you wonder like would you trust these people around you? Would you trust for them to stay sane and not have a cable loose and completely turn on you? It's a very disturbing and interesting thing that I've never really heard anyone talk about that I wanted to discuss because I find it incredibly interesting. Now, of course, these characteristics of psychological unsustainability and, and comfort with violence come with a very specific archetype of assassin and not all the assassins we see in the series. If you want to see me explain why I have a certain type of archetype that I prefer in Assassin's Creed, you could watch this video now.